Hi, I'm Steve Miller and welcome to this latest video of how I use DxO Photo Lab to edit my photos. Um, this some this one's a little bit different than what I usually do, it's not a full uh, edit of a, an image, but what is, um, there was a discussion on the DxO Photo Lab users Facebook page and someone had put a, a comment on saying that um, the why don't the selective tone sliders in DxO Photo Lab work and I just thought it was a bit of a strange thing to say because I haven't had any problems really. But when I get to got to thinking, I read into it. I think what it was is they try to use Lightroom, um, Fort Lab like you would Lightroom, and it, and it isn't Lightroom. It's you know I think it's designed different. So I just thought I'd go into some of the uh, just a few tips on uh, if you're coming from Lightroom or if you do use Lightroom and Fort Lab, you know you, you can't really use it the same way. So you have to sort of put a bit of work into finding out how the how the uh, the lighting tools in um photo lab work um so most of the things are going to be doing here they're they're under the uh under the light palette which is over here i don't use it over here i use it on the left hand side but i've moved it over here because I'm left-handed, I use a Wacom tablet, but they're all under here, exposure, smart lighting, selective tone, clear view plus. These are the sort of things we're going to be looking at today. As you can see, I've got the highlight shadow alerts on. I don't really use the histogram when I'm uh, editing the images, I just do it all by eye. I just want it to look nice, I don't care what the histogram looks like. So, straight away, uh, uh, not a spectacular image, it's just a reminder image. I went for a walk, I thought, yeah, it might be a nice place to come back in autumn. So I took a few images, it was a bright sunny day. So just this, you can see it's just a little bit, highlights are blown out a little bit, but not too much recoverable. Just a quick tip, um, not really what I was going to talk about, the tone curve, but an easy way to, um, if you've blown the highlights slightly, I mean, these aren't too bad. If you can go into the tone curve and use the, the Luma channel and then this is your highlights up here. If you just knock that down, if you just watch, uh, just knock that down three and you even two and I think the uh, the highlights had gone. Highlight warnings are gone. So that it's a quick way if you want to, you can uh, get to learn how to use the tone curve. But um Really, I'm not. That's not what this video is about. It's just a quick tip that. So, anyway, it's so people are probably coming to Photo Lab. They might have come from Lightroom and they're looking to use these selective tone sliders the same. So what they're saying is, is they were these sliders were covering too much of the tones. They weren't sort of working like they do in Lightroom, which this isn't Lightroom, so. I don't suppose you can expect it to really. So what they do, they go in, drop the highlights down, and then they up the shadows. And straight away you can see this is starting looking a bit flat. So in Photo Lab, if you wanted to use a selective tone, I'd look more, maybe try using the mid-tones a little bit. And a little tiny bit of the shadows. So we're not getting, to, we're not too bad there. Maybe drop the highlights down a little bit more. So that's not too bad. That's that's looking that's looking quite nice. Using the uh, the selective tones, but there's a quicker way of doing it. Uh, I find in Photo Lab, and I'll just show you what I mean. I create a virtual copy of that. I'll, I'll have them side by side so I can see what to get the look. So the one I'm working, I'll just reset that. So that's back to the original. That's back to the original image. Why? Why doing images like this? I use Smart Lighting and Clear View Plus. So I'd go into the Smart Lighting, I turn that on, and I just crank it up slowly. Straight away, you can see that's doing a nice job. Now, if you've lost a little bit of uh, that, this isn't too bad actually. If you've lost a little bit of contrast, I'll just go a bit higher. So I'll show you. I mean, the contrast gone a little bit. You can use a little bit of Clear View Plus just to put 
a little bit of contrast back in. And straight away with two sliders I've got nearly the same result as I did with using the highlights and midtones and shadow slider there. So maybe just a different way of working. Uh, so I, I'm not saying there's a wrong and a right way, but you know it, it's worth looking into these. You know what these different tools do. I think as people haven't got smart lighting and clear view plus, that's like clear view plus is a bit like a D haze in um, in Lightroom, but they don't have this smart lighting. So I think smart lighting is is quite a powerful tool, especially for for your um, landscape images. I'll just I'll just do another couple of examples, just do them quick. I'll just work on this one. I'll reset that. I'll just know. As you can see, when I reset, it puts smart lighting on because I always have a little bit of smart lighting when I actually first open images in um, on the preset when I first open images in Photolab. So same again. We'll do it the Lightroom way, where people say, "No, oh, you know, Photolab doesn't do it as good." So they'd knock the highlights down just to knock that sky down a bit. They up the shadows straight away, like I was saying before. Keep away from the shadows; it's it's too, it's too harsh. So use the mid tones. That's looking quite nice now. Maybe a little bit in the shadows. So that's not looking too bad. I'll create a virtual copy. I'll reset. And let's see if I can get that's already turned on. So I've turned that off. So that's the original image. That's the original image. And then we'll just see what we can do with a little bit of smart light and see if we can get it to this. What I've I had to do with three sliders, three or four sliders in there. So let's turn a smart lighting on. See there, it's not getting rid of that highlight warning, but we're not far away, we're not far from there. The smart, smart lighting. And in this case, we might just have to maybe use my little trick with the Luma. And that is not too bad. In fact, I've probably gone a bit high on the smart lighting now. Maybe using conjunction midtones. But as you can see, it's quite a quick way of uh, getting what you want. Um, so I think the, the smart lighting is really a is really a, a powerful tool. Uh, we'll we'll do another one, and then we'll try it on the I'll show on the um, a couple of wildlife shots. All right, so I'll just work the original image. Make sure it's reset. Not the smart lighting off that one. So this is real high contrast you can see so let's knock that highlights down to bring them back uh, let's have a look see maybe knock the midtones down and use the shadow slider this time so that's not looking too bad we'll use that as a reference right let's open up reset so this is the original image without the smart lighting on so if that's how we want to get let's see how it smart lighting does it so if I turn my smart lighting on we're nearly there just with one slider um, 
So I think um, you know this the smart lighting it probably is quite smart. We'll try it on a wildlife image. This is going to be a little bit different. Um, so we'll start off with that. As you can see, it's the sky behind is bright and the, it's a bit dark on the bird. So what we're going to have to do, I'll, uh, I'll drop the highlights a bit. Mid-tones, I'm not doing a lot of the mid-tones this time. So obviously it's going to be the shadows just to bring a bit of detail into the uh, into the bird and then maybe a little bit of micro contrast so we've got there that's not too bad I'll create a virtual copy and i'll reset and we'll try it with the smart lighting let's see how we can do with the smart lighting i'll just turn the smart lighting off So that's how we want it to look. That's the original. Well, let's try it with the smart lighting. And as you can see, I've cranked it right up. And it's not doing a good job this time. But this is where you can say, on this one, I'd use spot weighted on the smart on the uh, smart lighting. So you go spot weighted. It's not detected a face, so I can draw a box and say, right, that's, I want you to concentrate on that area. That's what I want to concentrate on. So now, if I do my smart lighting, you can see it's doing what we want on that bird. So that's just with one slider again. And another one, just last one, this uh, something a bit different again. So that's the original image. So we're we'll probably maybe up the uh, bit, a little bit underexposed, I'd say that. The exposure, maybe drop the highlights slightly. Let's have a look, we'll just have a play with how we want it. Definitely not the shadows this time. I think we'll add a little bit of contrast. Something like that. Create another virtual copy and reset it. So um, that is me one done with the selective tone. This is me original image. That's without the smart lighting on. So that flat image again. So let's see how the smart lighting does. I think that's done a better job. With one slider, it's done a better job than I've done with the uh, selective tone sliders. So I hope that um, sort of highlights something there. It's it's just a different way of working than in Lightroom. You can't come into Photolab and expect to work like Lightroom and use the sliders the same way. It's maybe that's how the uh, engineers at DxO thought you know they, they designed for a lab they wanted it to work that way you can't say it's the wrong way or or the right way really um, but I just thought I'd highlight that just a few tips there just if, if people are deciding to you know the the uh, decide try to decide whether they should use for a lab maybe they want to get away from the Adobe subscription like I did um, just I, I, I would advise you to to try and stop using Lightroom for a while for that month and just concentrate use Photolab uh, it's quite a hard thing to do especially if you're a working photographer but look I'm just an amateur so um, it, it didn't really matter to me that much but it's definitely worth the uh, just putting in that little bit of effort to try and see how uh, DxO Photolab works you can't expect it to work the same as Lightroom if you are uh, thinking of coming over to 
Photo Lab using Photo Lab. Uh, I uh, do offer. Uh, I've got a discount code Steve Miller fifteen. You can get fifteen percent discount on any of the DXO um, products. So, right. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps. Bye.